What's up, YouTube? I thought today we would do a video on how to um, protect your tools. And, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of videos here lately on that subject matter, uh, more or less, uh, not necessarily protecting your tools per se, but just protecting some of your uh, items like your, your wheels, your toolbox, how to use the penetrol for your, uh, is that even in frame? No, it's not. <laughs> Let me get this camera adjusted here a bit. You guys can't even see it. There we go. That's better. How to use uh, penetrol for um, rust prevention or if you want to maintain a certain patina look like I've been doing with my uh, 58 uh, GMC bill, truck bill. So um, that being said, I thought I would revisit um, the video that I did some years ago about applying this to uh, your tools. Now, if you got other methods that you like, whether it be WD-40, I don't know, people use like transmission fluid or something like that I've heard in the past. Um, in this video, obviously, it's not for you. However, if you're interested in understanding or wanting to, wanting to understand how to um, do this, then this video is for you. I'm just trying to clean off some of the crap off my toolbox because I'm tired of looking at it as you are as well. Um, but I thought we would go ahead and, and do a video on that subject matter and that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I uh, recently picked up uh, some pliers from Snap-on. I got them directly off the truck. My first time ever stepping foot on a Snap-on truck, which many people find hard to believe given the um the amount the sheer amount of tools that i i own and uh but that is in fact the case so we're not going to do anything super fantastic with this we're just going to show you <clears throat> the tools and i'm going to show you how i do it now um the problem i have is when you when you want to uh, if you need to warranty a tool uh, if you don't have a part number, it can be a bit of a pain trying to look it up to find out what the original part number is. Uh, and so, but you can still get it warrantied. It's just an extra step you got to go through just to figure it out. So, uh, especially if you're going to go in a truck, uh, maybe it's an older tool and uh, they don't quite make it anymore, or whatever the case may be, it may be hard to prove that this is not a knockoff. So, uh, this is another benefit to applying Penetrol to your, your tools. So all you're gonna do is get yourself some Penetrol. They sell it at uh, all your hardware stores, you, uh, Lowe's, um, uh, Menards, uh, Home Depot, whatever you wanna call it. They, they've got it, even Tractor Supply and places like that carry it as well. So all you're gonna do is get yourself some Penetrol and you want to make sure that the tool is clean. You don't want any um, grease or anything like that on it that could hinder the bonding of the um, penetrol to the metal. Uh, and it tells you right in the back of the can, which I highlighted in a previous video, unbeknownst to me, but it does talk about utilize, utilizing penetrol on um, bare metal surfaces to preserve them. So that's pretty neat. Uh, but you're going to take yourself a lint-free rag. You don't need a whole lot. Uh, a lot of times I even like to use like the sponge brush. Uh, you can get it at the Dollar Store, Dollar Tree, General Dollar, whatever you want to call it. And all you're going to do is simply wipe the Penetrol on. Okay? Make sure you apply it liberally. It doesn't have to... Don't be afraid to do it. I've seen how some of you guys treat your tools, so don't be, don't be afraid. Okay? And you know, make sure you apply it across all the surfaces. Now, with, with Snap-on stuff, it seems to rust pretty quickly. And I... I, for one, uh, I'm not a mechanic, but I, so if I buy something brand new from Snap-on, you better believe that I don't want it to be uh, rusting out because it's more money than what I, hey, shop cat, it's more money than what I would ordinarily want to spend anyway. And uh, the fact that I'm spending the money on that item, um, 
means that I damn sure want to make sure that it's preserved and it doesn't rot out on me, if you will, or rust out on me. So once you've got it liberally applied or generously applied, all you want to do then is just set it somewhere so it can dry. Um, I've got a couple racks on my box here. I'm going to go ahead and set them in. Hopefully you guys can see that. And that's just going to be so they can just dry. Okay. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't lay them on anything that's flat that's going to basically pull off the penetrol. Um, you know, but make sure you just apply it nice and liberally or generously, like I said, across the entire surface of the plier or whatever tool you're, you're coating. And then I always open mine up. And just apply it on the inside as well. And these already start to get a little bit of rust on the inside, I can tell. And I haven't even used them. <laughs> That's crazy. And then once they're done, they're coated. You can see it. It's like a clear coat. And like I said, just hang it up somewhere so that it's not laying on a flat surface. And that's it. I'll show you guys <clears throat> the sockets I've done. And I've done stuff in the past. And uh, this is a socket I coated like, I coated this socket like three, four years ago. And you can see it still has the patina on it. You can see where I've used it, or patina, you can see where the, the, the um, penetrol is still on it. Uh, but I've used this socket and uh, it's, it shows its wear, uh, but it does not, it has not flaked off in terms of that coating. Um, so if you have like a bare socket like this old Mac, all you have to do once again is just wipe it on. And sockets are so much easier because you can just kind of lay them down on the business end and uh, that's pretty much all you need to do. If you get this stuff in your hands, it's not toxic, like it's gonna make you break out in hives or nothing like that. Just, you can wipe, use some brake clean like you normally do anyway for most stuff and just apply some brake clean and you're done. But there, there it is. You can see the nice sheen on there. And then you can just take it somewhere and just set it off to the side and let it dry. We'll do a couple more just to kind of show you. Snap-on sockets, which are notorious for rusting. And the reason why I like this is because it doesn't leave a oily film. You can ply other things, obviously, to your sockets. You know, WD-40, penetr or um, PB Blast, any type of oily type coating. You can apply those things, but the problem is they, they leave an, an oil residue. And I don't like that. Uh, I typically like it to be fairly clean. Uh, and then if I get oily hands, obviously that's going to make it oilier, <laughs> more oily, oily. And then, um, you know, I don't want to have double, double your fun, if you will. Um, just kind of coating some of these sockets. This is just random sockets I'm doing for the sake of the video, not because I necessarily needed it. Now, I've been using Penetrol for um, this types of applications for many years a lot of people who have used it have just started using it um they're not quote unquote pros at using it or well they don't they haven't had a lot of experience with it fortunately for me like i said i've been using it for a number of years and uh, i've had this stuff out in the field i've i've had it on or it's still on a lot of my tools that are in my salvage chart box so um those tools have seen you know all everything they've seen uh transmission fluid they've seen oil they've seen dust they've seen grease they've seen um hydraulic fluid they've seen a little bit of everything uh and they still hold up very well and they still have the sheen on them uh and those are you know quote unquote field use tools now if you say well wait a minute james you just said you're not a mechanic what are you talking about field use what I mean is, though, I'm even going to try some, on some of these sockets that don't rust, like these Capris. Um, but what I mean by that is, though, uh, you guys know my channel. If you don't, welcome. Uh, I do a lot of my own work, and uh, meaning that I don't go and have someone else do it for me. I respect the work that mechanics do, and when um, there is an opportunity to use a mechanic to fix something because either it's beyond my scope my ability my scope and ability um or i feel that uh i just don't have time to do it 
uh, I will more than I'm more than happy to take that 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 project or whatever to that uh, mechanic to have them do it. So um, it's just it's not a matter of not respecting what they do. It's a matter of being a man and wanting to do my own work whenever possible. Too many times guys are not skilled enough. Like I said, they're great at procreation, but not good at turning a wrench, right? So, uh, and I know that's a pretty foul way to say it, but that's the truth. Um, a lot of guys are great at making babies, but that's about where the, the, the skill ends. Um, so I believe that men should know how to do something. And uh, by do something, I mean if they have something break, they should be wanting to learn how to fix it, repair it, um, and... Uh, go from there. They shouldn't always want to run to someone else, big brother, to fix it for them. But like I said, I do recognize the fact that here's some snap-ons that I've done in the past, some of the pliers, and they look great. You can tell they've been used, got all the oil and stuff from the last job still in them, but they look great. Um, here's some Knipex ones. These are my most used Knipex. Uh, they, are, they look great. I'm just going to apply another fresh coating on them. They look great, but these things are, these are the most used Knipex pliers that I have. But I, I digress. Anyway, uh, what I was saying is that, you know, most guys today, they, they love uh, to uh, watch football and they love to uh, do all that other quote unquote typical manly stuff. But when it comes to fixing their own cars or knowing how to uh, fix stuff for the wife, they don't know how. I've worked with guys who didn't even know how to change their own oil. <laughs> and I ain't lying about that. They literally didn't know how to change their own oil. And they, and they would tell you. They would say, hey, I don't know how to change it. Um, you know? And uh, you know, they expect for their women to do it for them. Or they expect for their women to just take it out to the, someone else and have them do it. I mean, if I'm a woman and... A man tells me that, hey, you know, I can't change your oil. Well, I don't know how to change your oil. I'm going to think to myself, like, how manly is this dude? I don't know, you know. And maybe that's a sign of time, the, cha the, the times of change where maybe that those are not qualities that women look for in a uh, significant other anymore. I don't know. But there you go, guys. I've coated four or five different tools, maybe more. I'm going to let them dry. I'll do a quick little follow-up video tomorrow, but that's pretty much how you do it. Like I said, this stuff is a miracle. It works. Oh, you know what? Something else I'm going to do real quick while I got you guys here. Uh, you see that toolbox in the back there. And uh, let me see if I can prop you guys up a little bit here. Don't get too sick on me here. I have to readjust the camera. But there, that toolbox back there has some rust. And if you guys recall, I just got done applying Penetrol to my uh, hood of my 58 truck. So I think um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also, man, I got to get this set up somehow. I'm also going to apply it to um, this toolbox. If I can figure out a way to set the camera up. All right, let's see here. I'll zoom in a little bit. I think I got a little bit on there. All right, let's go. box has some great patina um, and a good thing about the Penetrol is it will dry clear it's self leveling and it's gonna stop the rust where it's at so it will not continue the rust anymore because it's gonna be encapsulated so that's the pretty much the gist of it now I could have easily have painted this box 
and kind of got it back to the original look, but I thought the rust was pretty cool. So I wanted to keep it. Let me get that inner lip right there. So there you go. So now that's protected as well. But um, yeah, anything that you have that's rusty and you want to preserve it, obviously if you have some stuff you want to clean up, clean it up and then apply the penetrol. But for me, these items here, um, like I said, the sockets, I want to get them just coated just to show you guys how it works. I don't think I have any other tools that I desperately need it. Snap-on's notorious for rusting, so I typically apply this stuff to my snap-on stuff. I, like I have um, cornwell things and cornwell tools don't, they don't do that. The cheaper tools don't either. I don't know what it is, if it's like the carbon content or something like that, um, but they don't tend to rust either. I don't have anything in my main, well, my auxiliary drawer here that I want to coat either. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. So just a quick little tip for you guys. If you want to preserve your items and you don't want them to rust, use some, uh, some Penetrol. This is another video kind of supporting the product. I don't get any compensation from Flood or whoever makes it. Um, just something I've been using for, like I said, four or five years now. It's worked out really nicely. And uh, if on the, on the 58 hood, if you guys haven't seen that video, check it out. Uh, you can see how well it works to uh, bring out the patina in your old classic vehicles. All right, guys, that's all I got for tonight. Hope you liked the video. Make sure that you subscribe and leave a comment down below if you've ever used Penetrol to uh, protect your tools. All right, catch you in the next one. Peace.